In the previous lesson, we learned about stoichiometry flowchart and how we use the arrows as the conversion factor and the boxes as our given and our unknown. So we can solve for any unit based on our given and the unknown, including the different chemicals that's involved in this case. But we only focus on psi A so far. That is because we only work with one chemical. Today, we are going to work with one unit that will relate from one chemical to another chemical, and that unit is right here. This is the conversion factor that connects chemical A to chemical B, and that unit is called mole. So what is a mole, and what is the unit mole? Let's go back over here. The unit mole is a counting unit that is used to count very tiny objects, such as atoms and molecules, so extremely tiny. Now, a comparison could be a counting unit of dozen. When we count the eggs, we count in terms of dozen. Why is that? Because there are a lot of eggs that we have to count. When people count eggs, they don't count one by one, they count by a dozen. That way is a lot faster. The same thing in this case. When we count atoms and molecules, we count in terms of mole. So that way, when we write down the number, it is a lot smaller rather than using a very large number. Now, what is a mole in the first place? Just like a dozen is equal to 12 items, a mole is equal to a very, very large number. It makes sense because we need to use a very large number to count a very small items. And that number is known as the Avogadro number. And that's where it is on the stoichiometry flowchart right here. Avogadro number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And it's always equal to one mole. Just like a dozen is equal to 12. One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Again, the Avogadro number. Now let's go back and look at how can we relate mole to different unit? We learned from the stoichiometry flowchart that we can relate mole to pretty much almost anything. We can relate mole to grams, we can relate mole to representative particles, and we can relate mole to liter. And today we are going to focus on mole of A to moles of B. That is, we can relate two different chemicals, mole A and mole B. So let's go back and take a look at it. Based on our stoichiometry flowchart, the unit mole is like the central unit or the universal unit that allow us to reach out or convert into many different unit measurements such as gram, liter, and atoms or any other representative particles. So it makes sense that when we quantify substances in chemistry, we would use the unit mole. One place that we quantify chemical is chemical formula. In this case, I have this chemical formula over here, calcium nitrate. And we know this is the coefficient of it. And calcium nitrate is made of calcium and nitrate. So based on this, we can quantify in terms of mole. That is, I can say I have three moles of this calcium nitrate. Calcium nitrate is consists of one mole of calcium. And we know that this subscript will distribute in here. That means we multiply to the subscript. One times two give you two nitrogen. So this substance consists of three moles of nitrogen. And how many moles of oxygen? Two times three give us six. So six moles of oxygen. How is this relate to our stoichiometry flowchart? Going back to our stoichiometry flowchart, this is a conversion factor. The only difference that we have the different chemical A and B. So by looking at a subscript or by looking at a chemical formula, we can determine different conversion factor based on the substance in the chemical formula. For example, in this question, what is the mole ratio? Okay, we call this the mole ratio right here. This is called the mole ratio. And a mole ratio is just a conversion factor. And I just say, what is the mole ratio conversion factor? Once you have mole ratio, it's always referred to conversion factor between this substance, calcium nitrate, and oxygen. When we look back at the substance as a whole, we have three moles of calcium nitrate. But again, 
we are looking for the ratio. So we can just ignore this three and say, I just have one mole of calcium nitrate. And within that one mole of calcium nitrate, I have how many moles of oxygen? Two times three, that give us six moles of oxygen. Let's try another problem. What is the mole ratio conversion factor between calcium and nitrogen? Again, by looking at the term mole ratio, we can ignore the conversion factor. In this case, calcium, how many calcium do we have? Again, it is a ratio. We want to use a seamless form ratio, so we can just ignore this three and we just focus on one. So we have how many calcium? We just have one mole of calcium. And within it, how many moles of nitrogen do we have? Two times one that give us two mole of nitrogen. So these are the conversion factor called mole ratio that we can get from this specific chemical formula. Let's try another one. In this case, I have five mole of ammonium sulfate. And the question asks, what is the mole ratio conversion factor between ammonium and sulfate ions. Notice the term ion, isn't this part of the represented particle? But in this case, we can count it in terms of mole because this is a type of identity that we just look at. So we can just ignore the ions. We just focus on the formula itself. So in this case, what is the mole ratio? Based on the formula, I have two of this ammonium. So I say I have two mole of NH4 plus. And sulfate is the remainder of it, so therefore we know it's only one sulfate. So we have one mole of SO4 to minus. Let's try the next problem. So in addition to looking at specific element, we can actually look at in terms of ions, but we use the unit mole to quantify it. Let's look at the next question. What is the mole ratio conversion factor between oxygen and ammonium ion? So again, oxygen is right here, so there are four oxygen, so we have four mole of oxygen equal to how many of ammonium ions? Again, we have two, so it's two mole of ammonium ion, NH4. Another substance that we can use to quantify internal mole is a chemical equation or chemical equation of chemical reaction. So we just look at chemical formula. Now we are going to look at how different chemical formula combine together to form a chemical reaction. So a chemical reaction basically consists of different substances combined together or react to produce a product. So basically a chemical reaction consists of a reactant that combine together to form the product. And when we have a balanced chemical equation, the coefficient, which is the number in front of the chemical formula, also tell us about the ratio of the substances in the reaction. In this case, we can say that we have two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water. Notice how I use the term mole to quantify the substances. Because we can quantify into a mole, we can write conversion factor. That's the reason why we have the number signs here, either a subscript or the coefficient. Because the coefficient is coming from the chemical reaction. Where this one mostly coming from the chemical formula. So if I look at this question, what is the mole ratio conversion factor between hydrogen gas and water? This is hydrogen here, and I have two moles of it, so I put two moles of hydrogen gas. How many moles of water? In this case, is two moles of H2O. Now, can we simplify this ratio? We have two and two, so we can simplify that in terms of just one and one. But again, either answer is correct. Let's try the next question. What is the mole ratio conversion factor between hydrogen gas and oxygen? So we have hydrogen here and oxygen. So we have two mole of hydrogen gas equal to how many moles of oxygen? In this case, it doesn't have any substrate. In this case, it doesn't have any coefficient, so we have to assume that it is one. Just like when we have an element like this one, it doesn't have any subscript, we assume that it is one. So we have one mole of oxygen. And that's our answer. Let's try a more complicated problem. Here I have methane react with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. So we have one mole of methane react with two moles of oxygen to produce 
one moles of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. So what is the mole ratio conversion factor between methane gas and water? Methane is right here and water is right there. So we have one mole of methane. And how many moles of water do we have? That two tell you to have two moles of H2O. Then the next question asks, what is the mole ratio conversion factor between oxygen gas and water? So oxygen is right here and water is right there. So we have two moles of oxygen gas equal to two moles of water. But we can simplify this into one because, because the ratio value does not change. It's still one to one, but both answers are correct.